Yeah, weird. Okay, I'd like to call the Comox Valley Regional District regular board meeting of Tuesday, March 29th to order. I'd like to acknowledge that we're on the unceded traditional territory of the Comox First Nation. And we uh, are going to go in camera today, according to section following the regular meeting, according to section 91A. 91F of the community charter. So moved. Grieve and McCollum, thank you. And all in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried. And that brings us to the adoption of minutes from March 8th. Really Second. Killian and Morin, thank you. Any discussion on those minutes? And all in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried. And then there's the minutes from March 15th. Second. Grieve and Grant, thank you. And all in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried, thank you. We're on to reports. Uh, the first item is Electoral Area Service Committee minutes from March 14th. Hamir and McCollum, thank you. And all in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried. Move one. Grieve and Hamir move recommendation one regarding develop, development variance permit on a numbered company. Any further discussion? It's a vote of the areas. All in favor? Anyone opposed? One opposed, Arbor? That's carried, thank you. On to recommendation two. And that's the approved. Thank you, Grieve and Hamir. Um, approval of commercial industrial forum and character development permit. Any further discussion? And again, both the areas, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Opposed, Harper? And that's carried, thank you. We're on to recommendation three. Second. Amir and Grieve, thank you. Again, it's the commercial industrial form of character permit. Any further discussion? And it's the vote of the areas, all in favor? Carried unanimously. We're on to recommendation four. Grant and Hamir, thank you. Again, uh, that two commercial and industrial form and character development permits be issued. Any further discussion? Vote of the areas, all in favor? It's carried unanimously. We're on to recommendation five. Move five. Second. Grieve and Grant, thank you. It's regarding a deck in the floodplain. Any further discussion? And above the areas, all in favor? Oh, Director Premier, go ahead. I, um, thank you. I just wanted to explain, because I know we've had lots of discussions at this table around um, climate change on ocean level rise. And um, it does seem to say, think, um, I mean, this, this application might seem to be very much against it. Um, just wanted to, you know, uh, explain that the, the patio um, was deemed, you know, to be not at, um, not, a, not a huge risk in terms of sea level rise. It had been already built and this was actually an application to clean up a previous um, development that hadn't been um, properly regulated. So just a, an explanation for those people who folks were wondering. Great, thank you for that background. Any further discussion? Okay, it's so both the areas all in favor? That's unanimous, thank you. We're on to recommendation six. six. Grant and, and Hamir, thank you. And it's development permit for Yukon Inc. Any further discussion? 
And a vote of the areas, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. On to recommendation seven. Move seven, seven. Grant and grieve. Thank you. And it's regarding the close, coastal flood adaption strategy. Any further discussion? Okay. A vote of the areas, all in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. That takes us to item two, the Comox Valley Sewage Commission minutes from March 15th. Haley Ann and Grant, thank you. Any further discussion on those minutes? So both full board, all in favor? That's carried unanimously and we're on to item three, Comox Valley Water Committee minutes. Grant and McCollum, thank you. Any further discussion on those minutes? Okay, so vote the full board, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Again, carried unanimously. We're on to Comox Valley Rec Commission for March 15th. Minutes? Sure. Hillian and Morin, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, vote of the full board, all in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried unanimously. We're on to Electoral Areas Service Committee minutes from March 23rd. Sure. Grant and Hamir, thank you. Any further discussion? Vote of the full board, all in favor? Anyone opposed? That's unanimous. And we're on to item six, the 2022-2026 Financial Plan and Capital Expenditure Program. Grant and Grieve, thank you. And I'll pass it to Seth. Thank you very much, Chair and Directors. And Kevin Duvell, Acting CFO, will provide a description of this report and answer any of your questions regarding the financial plan. Thanks, Russell. Good afternoon through the chair to the directors. Uh, so in front of you today is the annual financial plan, and I've prepared a few speaking notes just to provide an overview of that plan, and then certainly would be uh, happy to answer any questions at the time. So the financial plan bylaw being presented this afternoon once again represents the culmination of the detailed budget presentations that took place over the past eight weeks, beginning back on January 25th for all now 102 regional district services this year, and that's up nine, uh, from 98 in 2021. However, in actual fact, our annual financial planning process really does kick off in earnest in early September and continues well into January in advance of the presentations provided to the CBRD board uh, and or its committees, commissions, et cetera. As the formal authority and approval of the service operational budgets and capital expenditures for the next five years, the financial plan incorporates the feedback and endorsements provided by the directors uh, over the course of the proposed budget deliberations and is now being presented to you as the recommended financial plan for 2022-2026. It's important to note that a key lens or focal point on the financial planning process again this year was Rethink Comox Valley COVID-19 Response and Renewal Plans uh, that were endorsed by the board back in mid-2020. These continue to both influence and inform our, our financial plans as we move through these early stages of recovery, as did the board's four strategic drivers, which always are reflected in our various, uh, with sorry, at various levels within our eight core service areas. Uh, that focus the regional district's ongoing work and initiatives. Some key highlights of the recommended 2022-26 financial plan for your information include, firstly, the consolidated budget for 2022 totals $189.8 million. That's compared to $148.5 million in 2021 and can be broken down in both uh, the operating side and the capital side. Firstly, on the operating budget, the operating budget for 2022 is 86.2 million. That represents a measured return to normal or pre-pandemic service level, levels, particularly in the areas of recreation and transit, which we will be continuing to monitor and reflect over the coming year. This operating budget also does include three new services beginning their inaugural budgets in 2022. And that's in addition to the water, fire protection and street lighting services inherited from the Union Bay Improvement District back in mid-2021. The three new services are the Denman Hornby High-Speed Internet Contribution Service, the Saratoga Beach Community Mosquito Management Service, and the Bain Sound Community Facilities Support Service. 
With respect to the capital budget, that currently sits for 2022 at $103.6 million. And this year's capital budget includes major initiatives such as the completion of the uh, Comox Strathcona Waste Management Regional Organics Compost Facility in Campbell River, along with the corresponding closure of that landfill. It also includes the development of Cell 2 at, again, the Comox uh, Strathcona Waste Management Center here in, in Cameroon, and also includes the ongoing steps forward for our planned $82 million sewer conveyance upgrades. And lastly, it does include some final project completions and debt conversion for our um, recently completed water treatment plant project. This year's financial plan results in an overall year-over-year -year increase in tax requisitions for 2022 of 1.5 million or about 4.18% from 2021. If you were to not include the three new services I just mentioned in 2022 as a true comparable year-over-year, -year, that increase would look then like about 3.75%. And if we were then to not include sewer, which of course is not truly a requisition, but more of a levy to the two primary municipalities, um, then that net increase becomes three and a quarter percent. All of this comes after a reduction of 226,000 or 0.64% from 2020 to 2021, stemming largely again to the COVID-19 renewal and response planning. So to give you a perspective of the annual total tax requisitions over the past three years from 2020 to 2022, in 2022, the total requisition is 37.47 million. That's compared to 35.97 million in 2021 and 36.18 million in 2020. And for direct comparison purposes in those totals, we have included for 2020 and 2021, the tax requisitions, um, that uh, were, were levied by the Union Bay Improvement District, which has now since been wound down with its services converted over to three new regional district local service areas. Also included in this year's financial plan is the distributions pertaining to the second installment of the BC Safe Restart Program funds in the amount of 402,000. And those have been incorporated into the financial plan based on the board's approval back in January. Allocations totaling $65,000 are also included in the Administration and General Government Service Budget for 2022, and these support three organizations as quested by the board, being the Comox Valley Social Planning Society with respect to their uh, Accessibility Committee, the Lush Valley Food Action Society with respect to the Comox Valley Food Policy Council, and lastly, the Comox Valley Community Health Network for the Phase 2 of the Substance Use Strategy. And lastly, highlights from other related parallel financial planning process for your information include with respect to the Comox Strathcona Regional Hospital District. The 2022 budget was approved back on March 24th and includes a tax requisition of 12.6 million, which is the same level as it was in 2021. And for the North Island 911 Corporation, the five year financial plan was approved on March 11th. And as a reminder, it is now based on an interim apportionment method of 50% assessment and 50% population, with the latter now updated to reflect the recently released 2021 federal census population statistics. With respect to the CBRD's contribution to 911, that has increased modestly uh, by $29,000 from 2021 to 825612 or 31.3% of the total requisition required from the six shareholder regional districts that make up that corporation. So what are our next steps? Upon adoption, the budget bylaw will be ready for posting onto the CBRD financial planning page. The 2022 revised assessment role is expected to be received in hand by, with, within the next couple of days, at which time the recommended financial plan will be updated a final time to incorporate the typically minor changes to service participant apportionments resulting from that revised role, in addition to any prior year adjustments stemming from the 2021 final role, which we just received um, about a week ago. The rural area tax requisitions will then be submitted to the province via the e-tax system and requisition invoices prepared for the municipalities prior to the April 10th deadline. For the hospital district, that deadline is uh, uh, April the 20th. The intent is to then have the completed electronic budget binder for the adopted 22-26 financial plan posted to the current budget page on our website by the end of April, along with the finalized requisition comparisons and max levy reporting. 
And we will also be looking to prepare the annual house tables um, that uh, can be compiled and distributed to the directors and to uh, the municipalities for reference. So this is not necessarily the end as budget amendments can and still will likely occur throughout the year. However, those will ultimately be presented to the board and or its respective delegated authority for its approval. And that's the end of my presentation. I'd be certainly happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you, Kevin. Any questions for the budget? Director Hamir. Not really a question, but just to thank staff for all of the hard work. Um, budget season uh, in any given year isn't a fun process for, I think, many, but um, this year particularly, lots of um, changes with the new services and um, increasing support for the community. So I just want to commend staff for being able to um, move with all of the uh, the initiatives that the directors um, were putting forward. Um, and I just wanted to ask staff if, um, I know we're, we're just approving for, for second and third reading today. Um, if, I, if I don't see any you know, opposition at the table, if we would uh, potentially consider moving adoption today, um, perhaps under new business. So if staff can... can uh... yeah, Madam Chair, um, it is possible for the board to uh, provide the adoption to the financial planning bylaw at this time. Typically two meetings are provided in the event that there is any modification or change required or, or if the, the, the consent cannot be reached for, for the first readings. In order to do it all in one meeting, a two-thirds majority would be required for that that uh, that majority vote. But if the board thinks that that's possible, then that forgoes the need to have a subsequent meeting on Thursday, and that could be considered under new business. Director Hillian. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to add to uh, Director Hamir's comments, acknowledging staff uh, in particular. Uh, I understand that the uh, financial department has been under a fair bit of uh, stress uh, due to uh, staffing uh, uh, challenges. And um, I think under the circumstances, uh, the fact that everything's been done uh, on time uh, and um, given all the complexities and uh, having to navigate uh, the vagaries of, uh, of this particular board, uh, um, I think everybody deserves a, a major kudos, uh, particularly this year. I'd also like to add that um, um, anybody tuning in might be a bit surprised that we don't have any questions about this, but of course we've been uh, we've been reviewing this process over the past uh, several uh, weeks, and uh, I think that uh, yes, and I think that there's a good rationale that's been presented for the uh, the budget that uh, we have here, and uh, pleased to support it. Thanks. Great, thank you for your comments. Any further discussion? Okay, there is a recommendation. I'll move it. Oh, sorry, we're on receipt. Yeah, all in favor of receipt. <laughs> and that's carried. Okay, Grieve and Hamir, moving the recommendation. And it's a vote of full board. All in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried. And we're on to bylaws and resolutions. And the first one coming up is the Financial plan bylaw. Grieve and McCollum move first and second reading. And it's a vote full board. All in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried. And third reading. Grant and Hamir, thank you. All in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried. And I think we can. We can take the vote now on the uh, two thirds um, majority to vote on adoption. So all in favor of, oh, right, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, we can do it now that we're dealing with the bylaw. Yeah. I will move adoption. Um, so first we have to move the two thirds that we allow adoption to be considered within the same meeting as first, second and third reading, yes. So Grant and McCollum, thank, thank you. <laughs> All in favor? Okay, that's two thirds. Uh, well, it's a, a unanimous vote, so we, oh, we, we made the cut there. Okay, Grieve and Grant moving final adoption of the budget. Any further comments? Okay, all in favor? 
And that's unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Okay, we're on to bylaw number 706, the Hornby Island Community Hall Service Area Conversion Establishment Bylaw. Grant and McCullum have moved first and second. So both the full board, all in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried unanimously. Okay. Grant and Grieve have moved third. All in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried unanimously. We're on to item three, bylaw 707, Denman and Hornby Island High Speed Internet Contribution Service. First and second. Grant and Hamir moving first and second. All in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried. Second. Grant and Grieve have moved third. All in favor? <laughs> Anyone opposed? That's carried. Okay, we're on to item four, which is bylaw number 708, Weed Control Service Future Expenditure Reserve. First and second. Grant and Grieve, thank you. So vote of the areas for first and second. All in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried unanimously. And for third, Hamir and Grant. And it's the vote of the areas. All in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried unanimously. We're on to item five, which is bylaw number 709, Denman and Hornby Island Bylaw Enforcement Service Future Expenditure Reserve. McCollum and Grant have moved first and second. Vote of full board, all in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried unanimously. Second. Hamir and Grant have moved third. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Again, carried unanimously. We're on to item six, which is bylaw number 710, Bain Sound Community Facility Support Service, Future Expenditure Reserve. First and second. Grant and McCollum move first and second. It's a vote of the full board. All in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried unanimously. Move seventh and for third. Second. Grieve and Grant move third. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Again, carried unanimously. We're on to item seven, bylaw number 711, Saratoga Beach Community Mosquito Management Service. I'll move that one. Second. Grieve and Grant move first and second reading. Vote the full board, all in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried unanimously. Move third. Second. Grieve and McCollum move third. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Again, carried unanimously. We're on to item eight, bylaw number 712, Comox Valley Regional District Local Election Bylaw. Move first and second. Grant and Hamir move first and second. So both full board, all in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried. And third? Move third. Grant and Helian, thank you. All in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried unanimously. That brings us to new business and we need to vote on whether to accept the addendum. Helian and Hamir. And all in favor? Anyone opposed? That's unanimous. That takes us to item one under new business, which is strengthening communities grant update. Hillian and Grant, thank you. And I'll pass it to staff. Thank you, Chair and Directors. And just a brief report. It's uh, itemized or it's on the agenda for you to consider and ask any questions of staff. But uh, the grant um, uh, request is to transfer the administration of this grant to the city of Courtney that have the resources and feet on the ground to, to manage the service. The grant was something that was endorsed by all local governments of the um, Comox Valley. So a similar resolution is being asked of uh, the village of Cumberland town of Comox and the city of Courtney have uh, city of Courtney endorsed this last night, the town of Cum pardon me, village of Cumberland uh, supported it last night and uh, your resolution is, is proposed for your consideration here. Um, it still will result in services being provided to the benefit of the whole community. Consideration of amending the application will be given by the city at a later date, but at this time it is just transferring administration 
and uh, UBCM, which is the uh, administrator of this federal provincial funding, um, has provided the uh, the uh, the um, the resolutions and wording and steps to undertake this. So it's all above board with respect to the grant administrator. Thank you, Director Grief. Yeah, one point zero nine three. Uh, through the chair and to, to, through the CEO to staff. Is, is that one of the larger grants we've ever received, at least for, for this kind of work? This, this is an exceptional uh, grant in terms of the kind of work it supports. It was uh, monies that were provided in consideration of the pandemic and the need to support uh, our, our community and those in need within our community. So it's, it's, it, it wasn't of the ordinary, but having said that, the regional district has administered grants in the order of uh, 60 to 70 million when you look at the water treatment plant and others that have uh, provided yeah. uh, uh, funding for infrastructure with, within our services. But just to be clear, this is a one-off. We won't be looking for this next year again. Uh, correct. There are other grants that are dealing with similar services, but uh, but uh, not not of this nature. Just wanted to make a point. Thank you, Director Swift. Thank you. Um, I noticed uh, on the agenda, Comox isn't entitled to vote. Is that correct? I'll just ask uh, uh, Jake Martins to explain the voting on this and how it pertains to the services we provide. Thanks, Jake. Thank you, Chair. And, uh, and uh, yes, to answer to respond to the question, Comox is not a participant in Function 451. Uh, they participate by contract, and so the participants are all the jurisdictions except for Comox. Okay, thank you. Director Hillian. Thanks, Chair. I just want to acknowledge that, um, as we all know, there have been a lot of challenges uh, with uh, the administration of this grant, and uh, hopefully uh, we found a, a way forward. And I just want to acknowledge all the work that uh, regional district staff have done in that process, and, and you as well, Chair, and uh, hopefully uh, we can... Uh, uh, see this uh, this project through and uh, get the support on the ground that we know is so badly needed. And uh, I'm hopeful that in the fullness of time, we'll be able to learn whatever applicable lessons there are um, that uh, come to us from the process. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, we're on receipt. All in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried. And there's Hillian and Hamir moving the recommendation. Any further discussion? It's a vote of the areas, Courtney and Cumberland. All in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried unanimously, thank you.